right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about Susan Bryson's essay, The Price We Pay, um, relating to the argument for censoring pornography based off of the harms that it inflicts upon everyone involved. And just to kind of define what we're talking about here, the general definition of pornography um, is that it's, you know, a sexually explicit image or text that's meant to arouse people sexually or create some sort of sexual excite excitement. Um, and Susan Bryson, though, kind of has a different definition of pornography. So her definition is more specific and detailed about what it is. She says that pornography is basically the violent, degrading, misogynistic, hate speech, images, text against women that kind of perpetuates sexism and discrimination and violence against them. So that's the definition that she's working with when she's talking about pornography here. Um, I know there are different kinds of pornography, but we're talking about more just mainstream pornography that's been produced and consumed for a long time. And so at the beginning of the essay, Susan Bryson talks about different arguments that have been made against censoring pornography. And she talks about the civil liberties argument. And it's basically that pornography shouldn't be censored because it doesn't harm people. So, you know, it's just my individual choice to consume it and it's not impacting anyone. Um, I'm not concretely hurting other people when I'm consuming it on my own, so I shouldn't be censored. And so this is where she says, but the thing is it is harming people. Um, you are, uh, helping an industry that is directly harming people, especially women and girls. And she says that there, everyone has a civil right to be free from sexual discrimination. And so by consuming pornography or by producing it or by selling it, one is violating that right to not experience sexual discrimination, right? So her definition of pornography then is that it does perpetuate sexual discrimination. It is a form of sexual discrimination specifically against women and girls, and especially against women and girls. And she says that um, oftentimes when you critique pornography, you're viewed as prudish. Oh, well, what you're saying doesn't matter because you're just prudent uptight. And she's saying, no, you can um, enjoy sexuality and sexual pleasure without um, accepting this violent type of pornography. And she also says that when people talk about pornography or experiences with pornography, sometimes they're not taken seriously. So if someone is being like, too emo quote unquote, too emotional about something, well, then they're not being taken seriously. If someone is not emotional, right, if they're very um, perhaps composed about pornography, their experiences, um, whether it's with pornography or some sort of sexual violence, um, then they're not viewed as, oh, well, it didn't really harm you because you're not being emotional. So it's kind of a double bind where regardless of how you react to something, you're viewed as um, you're not really going to be taken seriously. And so she talks about, you know, the harm of pornography in, in, in terms of how it's negatively impacted everyone involved. So she says that she, she talks about certain testimonies from people who have been in the pornography industry, specifically women and girls. She says that the pornography industry has played a major role with the sex trafficking of women and girls and how um, these individuals are promised um, a nice job or an escape from you know an oppressive situation or maybe moving from one country to another. And what ends up happening is that it doesn't happen, right? So they're basically deceived. And so it can play a role where they're kind of forced to engage in pornography. And then of course, there's a situation of consent because some people say, well, some women and girls consented to pornography. So what's the, what's the problem, right? If it's so terrible, then they wouldn't consent to it. Or it's not my fault for consuming it because these women put themselves out there to do it. And this is where Bryson kind of questions and interrogates the idea of consent, right? What is true consent? So she's saying that for a lot of these women and girls who enter the pornography industry, um, there's a lot of deception involved, there's false promises that are involved. Um, they also have, they can have limited options. So is it really truly consent, right? Perhaps if you came from a very disadvantaged background and you might think, well, this is like the way I can make money and get out of poverty, then is it really, are you really consenting to it? And are you, can you truly consent to something if you don't really know what's all involved in that, right? So we might consent to something, but we don't really know what we're consenting to. And she says that happens a lot with women and girls who um, enter the pornography industry. And also with sex trafficking. And so that's why we really have to interrogate that, interrogate that idea of consent. So it's harmful for the people involved who are directly kind of uh, performing pornography. It's also harmful for the people who consume it. And she's specifically talking about the boys and the men who consume pornography. Um, the average age that boys start consuming pornography is 12 years old. So obviously it's going to impact their perception of 
sex, sexuality, women, uh, body parts, and what they look like and how sex should be performed. And so they perhaps have these unrealistic expectations of women's bodies and what sex is like, um, specifically in the context of like a heterosexual encounter as well. Um, and so she says that this pornography increases the discrimination against girls and women by just kind of saying, well, um, you are viewed as a sexual object, you are a sexual being. Um, so it increases that sexism and these sexist attitudes that girls and women are for male pleasure, that their sexuality is for male pleasure, that their bodies are for male pleasure. And it also continues to dehumanize women and girls, right? We already, women and girls are already victimized in our society. And so then to perpetuate this idea that their sexuality is for male pleasure, for the male gaze, G-A-Z-E, right? This idea that um, one doesn't own their own body, but it's for another person's pleasure, right? That's already a problem in our society and pornography kind of perpetuates that problem through um, the brutalization and also the rape that occurs um, or perpetuating the idea that no means yes and that women like violent um, sexual encounters uh, rather than that being a conversation between sexual partners. So these are all of the harms involved and many more that Bryson discusses. And so um, she says then, okay, here's a clear example of how there are so many harms that exist, right? Why isn't this convincing enough? And so um, sometimes the argument that, more of like the libertarian argument that, well, we all have a right to sexual autonomy. And so pornography, the consumption of it, the production of it, that all falls under that, right? The right to sexual autonomy or like free speech and things and free expression and things like that. And she says, okay, well, let's think about other things that we have a right to. So in our society, we all believe that we have a right to sexual orientation, that we should be able to love and express our sexuality in different ways. And that doesn't just require a mere tolerance of it. It requires a, a true acceptance of it in our society for it to truly be embodied as a right. So this would have to happen with pornography. We would have to really accept pornography all of its harms, all of the implications of it, the dehumanization and all of that stuff she's talking about. And she says that's we shouldn't be doing that. We shouldn't be accepting it. So therefore we don't have a right to it. And someone's right to sexual autonomy or their desire, their sexual pleasure that can come from something shouldn't override someone's right to dignity, shouldn't override someone's right to not be harmed. So I think we tend to think of um, the harm principle as being much more important than the right to experience some type of pleasure. And she says that the harm principle, John Stuart Mill's harm, harm principle, is basically saying that my ability to move my arm ends when I end up hitting another person. And that applies to pornography as well because of all of the harm that she talks about. So no, we don't have a right to sexual autonomy when it's harming people and harming society as a whole, right? Everyone involved and everyone who's even a non-participant. Um, so, because of the harm of pornography, it should be constrained.